Good morning. On April 11, 20, 2015, I presented alongside many others at TEDx Accra. The theme for that day was the next chapter. Today, I stand here before you at a doom under the auspices of Watch the Doers. Today, I will give you a little bit about what I do at the Girls' Education Initiative of Ghana. It seems that these days, whenever I'm asked to speak, it's always about the Girls' Education, in education Initiative of Ghana. So for those of you who have never heard anything about GEIG, let me give you my elevator pitch. What is GEIG? The Girls' Education Initiative of Ghana is a nonprofit organization with a mission to provide academic and financial support for girls, including applicants with special needs, so they could access higher education and professional opportunities. For the last two years, GEIG has been supporting 12 girls from the greater Accra and the Ashanti regions of Ghana. Two of our girls have been diagnosed with dyslexia after GIG's interventions. So usually when I'm doing my pitch, this is the point in the conversation where people ask me, what is dyslexia? And so for those of us who don't know what dyslexia is, dyslexia is a learning difference where a person has difficulty with written language and comprehending something that's written when they're reading it. The accompanying slide, the accompanying slide provides answers to the question, why should we educate the African girl child? Some of the answers usually are early or forced marriage or teenage pregnancy and premature employment. So UNICEF in 2014 reported that Ghana has a 25% national early child marriage rate. And two years later, the Ministry of Gender, Social and Children and Protection has launched a campaign to end child marriage in Ghana. So I ask you, if you are a 12-year-old girl with dyslexia in the school, why would you want to be educated? It is important to note that, that a, as a girl be, um, growing up in Ghana, dyslexia or learning um, disability is very much more doubled for you. The World Bank reports that dyslexia or learning dis disabilities are more increased. Four out of five people in um, sub-Saharan Africa have prevalences of disability. So if I'm a girl who is 12 years old with a learning disability in Ghana, why would I want to be educated? Now I will talk a little bit more about what GIG has been doing for the past two and a half years. The GIG model works. We've been working very hard for the last two and a half years. And what exactly are we doing? We're providing students with year-round academic classes. We offer Saturday classes sessions for those students who may not comprehend what exactly they've been learning in the crowded, overcrowded classrooms that we're often faced with, right? And so for a child with a learning difference, our individual tutoring opportunities provides more inclusive learning. And that means that these children are able to be more participatory in what the teachers are teaching them. And therefore, they could also add, ask questions one-on-one -on -one and have better explanations given to them. We've also been providing leadership development and mentoring programs, and the evidence is soon will be on the screen for you to see. Um, all of our 12 girls have been paired up with individual mentors who provide them with advice on a regular basis. We, we ask that our mentors check in with all of our girls at least once a month. And our Women Who Inspires Leadership and Speaker Series offers our girls in the community another avenue for leadership development and mentoring. So you see the results and impact of what GEIG has been doing for the last two and a half years. So I think there's more evidence, some of the pictures of our girls with their mentors. So what's next for us? As, as TEDx Aduma is asking us to answer, what is the next step for us? Um, and the next step for us that is that GIG will introduce our third core program, which is the public service program, with, dubbed um, GIG Serves. It, under the GIG Serves program, students would be able to go into communities and de de develop tangible and measurable solutions to problems like sanitation, overcrowded classrooms, all these issues that are, I think we would all agree, are plaguing our communi community and our country, right? So, as you can see, the girls have been in communities doing cleanup exercises. And recently, as part of our vacation classes, we took them to the Eastern region, whereby they swept up um, 
the I believe it's the Ashiafo Amanfo. Please excuse me if I if I butcher that name. Ashiafo Amanfo community. Yeah, and as part of the Aka project. So what is next for us? I as I mentioned, we will be introducing our public service program and very, very soon our girls will five of our girls are transitioning to senior high school this year. And by next year, all 12 girls in the first cohort will be senior high school students. And I think we've done well, very well with that. To be able to keep 12 girls in school for two whole years, I think that's not an easy feat. And so we've been doing very well. Um, very soon, we hope to also recruit our next batch of students. And so we know that we can't do this just by ourselves. My colleagues, Eric and Adwa, are here with me. So I, I would ask you that after this presentation, please seek out one of us to ask us what we've been doing. And maybe you could volunteer and become a part of our movement. Thank you very much for your time.